Okay, guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Now, here we are at one of our favorite dive stores, Dive Source in Oshawa, Ontario, just north of Lake Ontario, as a matter of fact. Uh, great, uh, great dive store. Been around for 25 years. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to do it. This is one of our get, uh, what will happen if, or uh, 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 watch this videos yeah we want to try something i've not tried this before it's like when i took the scuba tanks in one of our earlier videos and dropped them from four feet in the air onto a cement floor and ran uh it's kind of like that we're going to try something see what happens everybody always wonders what happens if well here we go that's what you're that's what you're watching for you watch alec beer scuba to find out what happens if everybody every scuba diver knows that scuba tank valves have what's known as a safety disc or a burst disc it is a safety feature that's built into every scuba tank valve. There it is right there. I just took it out. Not a big deal. You know, they're only worth about a buck. Uh, but what it is is a tiny screwed disc. I'm going to hold it here for you so Kevin can get a picture. And I, want, I want you to see a couple things about it, Kevin. Can you see this got two holes? It's actually got three holes. Technically, this is actually a burst disc assembly because burst discs are made up of three parts. The plug... The actual disc, a little brass disc, that little Teflon washer. What you would do, you would put the little Teflon washer in, and then you would put the brass disc on top of the Teflon washer, and then you would put this plug on top of that assembly and screw it in nice and tightly. So the Teflon washer is sealed, the brass disc sealed on top of that, and then the disc sealed on top of that to hold those two first items in place. So this little tiny brass disc on here, which by the way has a number written on it, which is the not the not the pressure which it blows, but the pressure for the tank that it's designed for. Okay, and then that little brass disc. <clears throat> if the pressure in the tank gets too high, it'll actually burst. Now this little brass disc. Kevin's got close-ups of these. This little brass disc. <clears throat> has been used and i know it's been used because if you look at the two of them kevin has pictures an original unused brand spanking new brass disc is flat the little brass disc has just been punched out of a brass sheet of a certain thickness the used one is a little disc flat but with a dimple in the middle yeah it's got quite a dimple because when you insert the burst valve burst disc into the valve it's flat and when you start to fill the tank, the pressure builds up and it starts to push on that brass. It actually pushes it and gives a little dimple. It doesn't burst, hopefully. It gives a little dimple. And then every time you fill that tank, that little brass disc is worn a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It's good for many, many thousands of fills. Burst discs do not burst very often. But eventually, if you continue to fill the tank time and time again, eventually the burst disc would break down. Brass is a little bit brittle. Yes, I know it's ductile, but it's also a bit brittle. And eventually it would burst. The whole theory behind this whole system is that if the pressure gets too high, that little brass disc will burst. And that will let the pressure off the tank before the tank itself bursts. Technically, that's possible. If you put too much air in this tank, the tank will split. There's a limit, you see. So a little brass disc in there. So you put this, and then they used to have just three pieces, and then they put them into an assembly. And that's what they have now, an assembly. So that's what this is, and you put that in there like so, and you put it into a certain torque. You actually have to use a torque wrench, a proper torque wrench, to put it in there, the right torque. And this, you put it in a 74 foot pounds, right on. <laughs> and then it's in properly and then your tank is safe to fill so what we're going to do we're going to go back to the compressor room we're going to put this burst disc in and we're going to blow it up watch this and we're going to give this a try so what we have set up here now is uh, the tank that we had out front we've installed the uh, new burst disc and uh, it was connected to our uh, bank with 4,000 psi we have 3,000 available right here and everything's set to go so I'm going to put on a little bit of personal protection Yes. And then we're going to give this a try and see what happens. All right. First, let's put a mask on. This is tempered glass. So hopefully, I don't have any safety glasses here. I don't think I need that. There's nothing going to be flying. It's just air. But this is a tempered glass, uh, just in case anything around the room flies. And I want to protect my ears. I've only got two. And there we go. Can you hear me, Kevin? Good. I can't hear you. Now, the burst disc is facing you, Kevin. Is that okay? You're not too concerned about it? No, oh, no, it's not going to blow you over. All right, here we go. So we're going to open the tank valve first. Tank valve uh, all the way. 
open, no restrictions there to the end, seal properly. And here we go, let's see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen here, Kevin. So hang on to something. It worked! <laughs> Just like it's supposed to. Give me that wrench there, Kev. Let's take this out and take a look at it, huh? See what the burst disc looks like. Thanks very much, Marty. So, you see? You don't want this to happen. Technically, when you take your tank in for the hydro test, if not the annual visual, but certainly for the hydro test every five years, technically, the serviceman should be replacing that little burst disc. As I mentioned earlier, it's not very much money. Whoa, look at that. It used to be a solid piece of brass. You saw them earlier. Look at the whole center's been blown right out. Caught in the holes or something, maybe down in, I don't know. Anyway, there you go, guys. You do not want this to happen to you. As I say, <clears throat> normally, when you do your hydrostatic testing, the, the, the serviceman, if he's doing a complete and a good job, We'll be changing your burst sticks for you. They're not expensive. Anyway, that was kind of fun. Never had that happen before. Now remember, this was done by a professional who has no regard for his personal safety. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Alec Pierce. Scuba Tech Tips. See you soon.